All right, can everybody hear me okay in the back? All right. I want to do a couple of introductions, like Jordan said. Laura Gallagher from Chris Healthy Aging is here. My name is Adani. I'm from Champaign County Healthcare Consumers. Also in the back, we have OSF, another SHIP site, um, in addition to Chris Healthy Aging. And again, there are going to be appointments available with all of us here if you are looking for one-on-one -on -one assistance. Um, and so I just wanted to say hi, and thank you for being here today. We're going to be talking about Medicare, and so I kind of wanted to get a show of hands and see um, how many people have Medicare right now. All right. Oh, so we got people who are already signed up. Anyone on Marketplace coverage from the ACA? Anyone on Medicaid? All right. So this is good to, good to know. All right. We got a lot of just people who already kind of know what's going on. And then is anyone a state or university retiree? All right, yeah, so um, the stuff that we're going to be talking about is relevant, but about specific advantage plans or specific options, they might look a little bit different. So the kind of options that you have available will look a little bit different than what um, I'm going to be talking about in terms of the price ranges and stuff like that. So some of that stuff is not going to be exactly applicable, um, but if you have concerns about what your options are, you can contact CMS, and the phone number is up here. Um, and then if you have concerns about what your options are and why they picked a certain contract, you can contact your state senator or representative with concerns. And let's get started. Yeah. Sorry, real quick. For the people who are um, state retirees, um, I just talked to the, a lady in the back room. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that's going to be a reoccurring theme of, among Medicare is like just make sure you understand the co consequences of your actions sounds very scary. It's not as scary, but just understand the implications of what happens when you change something um, because even with a basic employer coverage, even outside of the state, employer coverage sometimes, again, if you reject those benefits, if you reject uh, that benefit, it might be hard to get back onto it. So just make sure you understand, will I have an option to get back onto this next open enrollment? Ask that. That's the question to ask. Will I be able to get back onto this next open enrollment? Or when is the soonest? If I have a change or something, could I make a, you know, when could I make a change or when could I get back on? Because that is something that happens in regular Medicare as well, where if you make a change and you're outside of the open enrollment and you're not satisfied with that change, you won't be able to get back on. If you reject something, you're not going to be able to get it until next year or something like that. So just understanding the implications of what you're about to change, um, which is what this presentation is about, is just making sure that you understand the implications of uh, when you can change, what you can change, and how you can change it. And we're just going to start at the very beginning, which I think might be, so I'll kind of breeze through some of these. Uh, Y'all that are already on Medicare might already know this. Part A is hospital insurance. What that means is that the coverage for Part A is emergency rooms, anytime you're using the facility, a surgery, inpatient surgery, outpatient surgery, anytime you're kind of using the facilities, that's what Part A is. 
Part B is the medical insurance. This is the brunt of your coverage and it covers doctor visits, lab work. Um, this is kind of like the outpatient uh, primary care specialist visits. Those are the medical elements of it. And then Part D as in drugs, the prescription drug plan. And we're gonna talk about Part C later, so don't worry. <laughs> Part A is usually free for most people uh, based on qualifications through disability, if they've worked uh, and paid into Medicare for at least 40 quarters, or married to someone who qualifies. If you do not qualify for free Medicare, you can pay a premium to have M Medicare Part A, but usually it's free. Um, original Medicare Part A has a deductible of 1556, so that means that for each hospitalization, so anytime you're, you're going in, you're going to be responsible for up to 1556 each time. These are 2022 numbers. Our 2023 numbers have not come out yet, and they won't come out until maybe November. It's, it's been kind of edging later and later. We used to get them in October, and now we kind of get guesses in October. And then later on, sometimes in January, we don't have certain things confirmed until the new year. Um, so just keep these tentative. And again, these are for original Medicare, your red, white, and blue card, just the red, white, and blue card. So we haven't even added anything onto it yet. Um, so it covers in-hospital in care, skilled nursing facilities, hospice care, and some home health care. And then if people have, we're small enough that if people have questions in the moment, you can feel free to ask now, but we also will have time for questions after the presentation. Part B, that does have a premium. That is not free. The premium for Part B this year was kind of high. It was $170 each month. That's usually deducted from Social Security benefits if you're taking Social Security benefits. You do not have to take Social Security benefits to get Medicare. What happens if you're not taking Social Security benefits is you get charged quarterly. So you get charged three months worth of your Medicare Part B premium, and you get that bill in the mail from Social Security. Social Security is the gatekeeper for Medicare. So that's just to have it, right? That's what a premium is. A premium is just to have the coverage. And then Part B also has a deductible, but instead of being per event, like that Part A was per hospitalization, the Part B deductible is $233 per year. So once you've paid $233, that's when Medicare is paying 80% of your coverage and your responsibility would be 20%. And if you do not sign up for Part B when you first become eligible, then you might have a penalty depending on how long you wait to get onto Part B. So again, keep in mind when you reject Part B, you are risking a penalty later on. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you won't be able to get coverage, but you might have an even more expensive premium if you wait several years to get onto Part B. Um, and that is specifically if you don't have any other coverage Creditable coverage is employer coverage. Um, it, it's Employer coverage is really the main thing that's creditable. <laughs> Marketplace coverage, you have to terminate before you get onto Medicare. Um, and then Medicaid is not considered, that doesn't replace your Medicare. If you're eligible for Medicare, the state wants you to enroll in Medicare and Medicare becomes your primary. So like I said, it covers doc part B is doctor services, um, ambulance rides, uh, diabetic testing supply, durable medical equipment, um, and this really the major part. So again, really, if you're thinking about rejecting part B, really, really think about that. Medicare does not cover vision. Uh, it covers cataract surgeries and glasses for cataract surgeries, but it does not cover routine eye exams or regular uh, vision correcting glasses or contact lenses. It doesn't cover dental, hearing aids, or long-term care. When you enroll in Medicare Parts A and B, you do that through Social Security. Again, it's based on your how many quarters you've worked. So that's going through uh, Social Security. They're the gatekeepers for this program. So no matter what kind of coverage you have, you usually have to kind of at least go through that first step with Social Security. If you're already taking Social Security benefits, like retirement benefits, or again, we talked about disability benefits, you'll be automatically enrolled in Medicare and you'll get a red, white, and blue card in the mail. If you are not enrolled in Social Security benefits, you do have to proactively call Social Security and get set up with them to do a Medicare enrollment. Um, your initial enrollment period is the window of time that you have to go to Social Security and sign up. This period is 
a long, it, sort of a long time. It's three months before you turn 65, your 65th birthday month, and then three months after you turn 65. Um, so we've got seven months to sign up for Medicare, figure out how you want to schedule and kind of set it up for yourself. Um, and then on your 65th, ideally on your 65th birthday, you'd be all set, but you have more time than that. So even if you've already turned 65, there might be a chance if you're within, you know, three months of that, that you'd still be able to sign up for Medicare. Nope, your initial, uh, your initial enrollment period includes three months after your birthday. So it is that one window of time. But if it's like you didn't sign up and now it's your 66th birthday, now you're talking about penalties because it's been, a, you know, it's been uh, nine months since you were able to sign up for Medicare and you still haven't. It could be it, it could be based on employer though too. Your employer might have different rules for when they want you to sign up for Medicare because an employer options are based on you being signed up for regular Medicare. And so you might have to they might want you not to they might not want to pay for keep paying for you <laughs> after your sixty fifth birthday because you get more expensive. Go ahead, Laura. I No. <laughs> no, it changes, but it's not a penalty. Yeah. Yeah, the penalty it varies. Claudia, go. did you have something to add to that? Um, it, the, the, the categories are pretty broad, so um, I can't give you the exact, but I think it's... Yes, yes, but the, 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 it's like 250,000. I'm not going to guess it. Never mind. <laughs> I might go to Medicare.gov and we might look it up at the end of it, but it is, it is mean testing, but most, most people are, are around this basic 170, um, but it could potentially be higher as well. This year was a really high, yeah. It's very difficult. We'll talk about in the end some of the ways to reduce these costs, um, but it, it is pretty difficult. Drug, this is a speculation. Negotiating drug prices, Medicare having that option is something that should reflect in the Part B premiums because what they what the word on the street was is that this premium for part b went up because a medication went up um and it was so expensive or so you know ridiculous that they had to like come up with this money somehow through don't i don't know i don't know this was kind of what they blamed it on is was a drug it was a medication so i'm hoping 
that the new changes, new legislative changes will mean that these premiums don't go up as much. Generally, premiums do go up a little bit every year to catch up with inflation, um, unfortunately. But um, these were these past couple of years have been dramatic shifts that have made people really consider whether they should keep Part B, which is very frustrating. But go ahead. Yeah, if you're currently on Social Security uh, and you're taking benefits before your 65th birthday, they'll automatically send you a card. Yeah. They'll. What'll happen is they'll mail you a card and they'll be like, "Here's your new card. Tell us if you want to reject Part B. It costs $170." And then they don't tell you that if you try to get back on Part B and that Part B is like really the bulk of your coverage, it'll be really difficult and frustrating. <laughs> so that's what'll happen is you'll get a card in the mail and it'll have kind of like a big card attached to it. And they'll be like, here it is. If you don't want to pay this, send it back to us. I've had a lot of people who are like, they told me I was going to have to pay this much. So of course I sent it back. And it's like, no, wait. <laughs> um, so you'll automatically get something in the mail. It'll be a booklet. It usually doesn't come right on your 65th birthday it'll come several months beforehand. So it'll be kind of closer to the beginning of that initial enrollment period. So 64 and several months is usually when it'll come in. Um, again, if you are under 65 and you're receiving disability payments, usually after 24 months, you'll automatically get a Medicare card as well. If you miss your initial enrollment period, so that's the one that's based around your birthday, um, you and you don't have a special enrollment period, which is like you lost your employer coverage, you moved or something, um, if you don't have anything like that to kind of be a mitigating circumstance, we do have a general enrollment period, and that's January 1st through March 31st. So you would have to, if you've missed your initial enrollment period, you on January 1st, you could march up to Social Security and say, hey, I would like to sign up for Medicare. Uh, parts A and Part B, and then that coverage wouldn't start until July 1st. So again, when you miss it, these the penalties kind of start adding up. So there's a monetary penalty that you have over the course of your life, and then there's also a huge coverage gap if you've lost your insurance, missed your Medicare window, and now you have to sign up during general enrollment period. Your coverage doesn't start until July 1st. So you don't have coverage until the middle of the year. And then shifting over, the card that you get in the mail, all it is is Parts A and Part B. It does not include Part D prescription drug coverage. So theoretically, if we added prescription coverage just by a standalone Part D plan, you would have a health insurance with your red, white, and blue card that pays 80%, and then your prescription plan would pay whatever negotiated price and co-pays for your prescriptions. So that by itself is theoretically a health insurance plan. It covers doctor's visits, uh, emergency room, uh, and prescriptions. If you decide, so, so kind of when people get their Medicare card, I try to say the thing you're missing is prescription coverage. Even if you don't take medications, you just want to make sure you have some kind of prescription coverage. And we'll see that you can get that in several different ways. But the main thing is prescription coverage, Part D. If you don't have a lot of prescriptions, just get one of those, get the cheapest plan so you have it, whether it's, you know, just in case you get a prescription, at least, you know, you won't get a penalty. Because that's this is another area where you can get a penalty for not having prescription coverage. Nope, it is not a supplement. Part D is a standalone prescription plan. All it does is pay for prescriptions. We're about to get there. Don't worry. Don't worry. You're jumping ahead of me. Uh, so we're just talking about prescription drug coverage right now. Um, a Part D plan, you're going to be possibly getting mail about these. Um, D is in drugs. Part D. Part D is in drugs. All it does is pay for drugs. These are Medicare-approved private insurance companies. So you're going to see familiar insurance companies on this list of prescription, you know, it, on a list of prescription drug plans. You're going to recognize some of these companies. They have contracts with Medicare. They help cover the cost of prescriptions. And each plan has different a different list of prescription drugs that they cover and different pharmacy networks. So if you have a preferred pharmacy, you want to make sure that your prescription plan does include the pharmacy. 
Um, there is a penalty if you don't sign up for Part D. Uh, enrollment is through Medicare. So again, once you get that red, white, and blue card and you're ready to start adding stuff to your Medicare, you could go to Medicare now. Now that you're in through Social Security, now you can talk to the Medicare department about your Medicare now that you have it. Um, so enrollment is through Medicare during your initial enrollment period when you lose creditable coverage as well as the annual open enrollment period. So one of the things that you can change as we're coming into open enrollment for Medicare that starts October 15th, uh, prescription drug plans are one of the things that you can change. And now we're going to talk about Advantage plans and supplements. There are a couple of different things you can do with your Medicare, the different ways that you can set it up. One way is to keep your red, white, and blue card, add a Part D prescription plan to it. And like I said, just this part right here, these two boxes, this is all just going to be, you know, this is an 80-20 plan, right? So your red, white, and blue card pays 80%, and then your responsibility would be 20% after you've met those deductibles that we talked about earlier. So 20% is can be expensive if you have a lot of medical needs. So one thing that ha uh, one option that you could add to your Medicare is called a supplement or Medigap policy. And what this does is it pays the 20% that you would otherwise be responsible for. So if you wanted to have some kind of a plan where you're only at the pharmacy or at the doctor's costs, um, you know, if you wanted to have kind of the lowest overall costs at the health provider, um, then you would probably want to do a supplement because the premiums are really high, but you really don't have to pay a lot out of pocket except really just for your prescriptions. Um, and then a different option is an Advantage plan. And this is what a lot of people have. This is something that has networks, um, and we're about to jump into them, so I won't super duper. All right, so an Advantage plan is something that combines your Medicare parts A and B, and it adds usually adds prescription coverage to it. Um, so this is one way to meet that coverage, uh, that prescription need, is an Advantage plan will usually include it. These are set up like HMOs and PPOs. So if you had a plan with an employer that was like, you have a $20 copay to see your primary care doctor, here's your list of drugs, that's what an Advantage plan looks like. Um, so it kind of just looks like a traditional plan that you might have had with an employer or on the marketplace. Um, and Advantage plans have networks and they can offer additional benefits. So they can include, you know, we'll reimburse you uh, $1,500 for dental benefits or here's a vision exam for 20 bucks. Um, so they have a variety of benefits. And you can try them on and change to a different one uh, January 1st through March 31st. So you could pick an Advantage plan during open enrollment period and then realize maybe I want to get a different one or I want to go back to my previous Advantage plan. So you could switch those out um, through March 31st. Um, Advantage plans, again, are going to be based on you having Medicare Parts A and B. So you don't get out of paying the premium for your original Medicare. You have to have that card and you have to keep paying those premiums because that is the basis of your coverage. Medicare has contracted with Advantage plans to provide you your services at your health care services. So you do have to keep that Medicare but then the bills go to the Advantage plan. A supplement is that product that pays 20% on your health care. So it's like when you go to the doctor's office, you still have to show the red, white, and blue card because the bills are still going directly to Medicare. Um, and then at the pharmacy, you have to show your prescription plan. But at the doctor's office, you're also going to show them your supplement plan, and they're going to send a bill that's left over, that 20%, they're going to send that to the supplement. The supplement does not have contracts. It doesn't negotiate with doctors. Literally, all it is is a coupon for 20% off, which is what your responsibility is after Medicare pays. So that's all they do. They don't. They don't have benefits. They don't have, or like they don't have uh, extra vision or dental. Um, they don't make network network contracts with doctors. So everyone is going to accept your supplement. Um, supplements are much more expensive because they don't have to deal with networks and they pay the full amount of 20%, whatever that means for your specific medical needs. And so you can kind of see the side by side here. A supplement is used in conjunction with your red, white, and blue card. 
Um, all the companies are going to offer the same benefits. It's just kind of like how much coverage there is. And the handout, the yellow handout, is these slides. Um, so if you have a little packet or if you want to get a yellow handout from the back, um, you can see this information is on that handout. Um, and there's usually no network limitations for supplements. Medicare pays first, then the supplement, and then anything else um, you would be responsible for. And it only covers things covered by Medicare. So again, no hearing aids, no vision, no dental. Supplements tend to be more expensive because they are based on you and your health status. So they're based on how old you are, they're based on your health status, and then um, if you smoke, again, they can charge you more per month. Advantage plans, they replace original Medicare, so instead of giving your red, white, and blue card to the doctor's office, you would just give them your Advantage plan card. Um, the benefits vary, the extra benefits vary, but again, all of them do cover, you know, doctor visits, ambulance rides, that stuff. Uh, generally has a network. See, this is the big, this is the big issue. These Advantage plans have networks, and so you have to make sure that your doctors are covered. The plan pays, and then you have either a copay or coinsurance, and it can cover extra services. They tend to be less expensive because it's the same price for everyone. So everyone can go to Medicare.gov and look at the prices for the Medicare Advantage plans. Some, several of them are free. Um, others increase in price. There's no, there's no pricing based on your age or your health status. And that's what, uh, so Part D plans and Advantage plans are the things that we can change during our open enrollment. Open enrollment starts every year for every Medicare beneficiary, October 15th through December 7th. If you are part of a employer retiree plan, this will be different. Do not write this down if you're part of an uh, employer or retiree system um, because your open enrollment is going to be different for everyone else. Uh, there's an annual open enrollment period uh, between October 15th and December 7th. If you have extra help or full Medicaid, you can switch throughout the year. But again, if you don't have those programs, whatever you pick during open enrollment, unless you know an Advantage plan has a trial period, but then you're kind of not going to be able to change. So if you terminate that coverage, you wouldn't be able to get coverage until January 1st of next year, as long as you remember to sign up for something during an the annual open enrollment. In 2022, there were 23 different prescription plans, and they ranged from $6.90 all the way up to $94 a month. Unfortunately, with Medicare, they still have a lot of plans with deductibles for prescription plans. Um, so that means that you're going to have to pay the full price of your prescriptions until you uh, until you get a discount on those or you start paying a copay. But again, it varies. Some of the more expensive plans are able to not have a deductible. Um, and they, we've got several different coverage phases. Phases They still make this really complicated. I'm so sorry. Um, and you want to look at more than the premium when you're looking at prescription plans. Like you want to make sure it covers the actual medications that you take. Um, because it, it doesn't matter if your plan is $6.90 if it doesn't cover your prescription, which then means you have to pay out-of-pocket costs for it. And then that prescription is $100 or $50 every time you get it. Um, so it's really, really important to have your medications with you as you're choosing a prescription plan. The coverage phases for prescription plans are the deductible, which means the, you know, it's usually 480. Some of them are less than that, but that's what they can get away with. Um, so you'd have to pay full price in the deductible, but then once you've reached your deductible, you're paying initial coverage. So that usually means your copay. So $10 for a generic prescription. And then catastrophic coverage comes into play when you and your health insurance plan have spent so much money that now they're like, wow, you spent so much money, and so we are going to uh, charge you not that much for your prescriptions because we've spent so much money. There isn't a donut hole per se, but there is kind of a coverage gap right before the catastrophic phase where you'll end up paying kind of 25% of the cost of your prescriptions. And then at $7,000 between you and the health insurance company, that's when catastrophic coverage kicks in. So 
short story is on a prescription plan, the copay that you're paying initially might not be the same copay that you're that you're paying. So your prescriptions cost might change over the year. It just kind of depends on what your prescriptions are. If you take only generic, you don't really have to worry about a catastrophic or you know coverage gap or anything like that because usually generics are uh, they're not even subject to deductibles really. So if your generic drug is five dollars every time you go, it's going to be five dollars throughout the year. Um, it's when we get into the more expensive name brand um, or just if your prescription isn't covered, that's when we have to really think about like where are we going to get, how are we going to move through these phases. And then once you reach the 7,000, the catastrophic is like where they really just cap it at $3.95 for generics and then $9.85 for name brand drugs. So whatever you pay during the coverage gap is capped at a percentage of what the plan pays for that drug. So there are, there is a ceiling to how much you pay, so it's not, you know, quite as, you're not on the hook for as much, but again, this is still a lot of money. <laughs> and then this is a, kind of a, an example of how someone would go through the phases where they've reached their deductible and now they just have to pay their copay, but then once they're in the coverage gap, they have to pay a slightly higher amount. And then once they reach catastrophic coverage at 7,000, that's when you pay the smallest copay. And now we're gonna shift over to the kind of just the, it's kind of a snapshot of the 2022 plans. Uh, on October 1st, we'll actually be able to see the 2023 plans. Um, so you can go to medicare.gov like right now and see these 2022 plans. Um, and then after October 1st, you could see the 2023 plans. They range from free to all the way to $165 a month. And again, the Advantage plans, the network is the biggest thing. So Advantage plan, network. Advantage plan has a network. Advantage plan has a network. Remember that. Does it cover your doctors and hospitals and pharmacy? Um, does it cover the services that you use regularly? So if you primarily go to the primary care doctor, how much does that cost to the go to your primary care doctor? Do you get lab work every month? Do you get x-rays every month? Um, you know, how much does it cost to use the services that you are regularly using? And does it cover your medications? Um, are your plan, are, you know, are your prescriptions generic that are covered? Sometimes they're free on Advantage plans. Um, so you need to look at more than just the premium every month because there are all these different elements. So you kind of have to just take a little bit closer look, which I know is frustrating, but I really recommend it. Even if you like your Advantage plan now, um, I do recommend looking at the new ones. Sometimes they're not good options. There's nothing that beats your plan, but these plans can change every year. So I do recommend taking a look at your 2023 version of your plan and make sure that it still meets all of the needs that you have. So during, yeah, you can change Advantage plans year to year during the annual open enrollment period. That's what you can change. A supplement, since that is based on you and your age, it is less recommended to change supplements because your supplement might not accept you back. If you got off of it and then you're like, well, I want to get back to the supplement. That's, I really like this better. They might not accept you back because you might have aged a couple years or had a new condition that makes it harder to insure you. Um, and so they're, they're only guaranteed to accept you for a supplement at the very beginning during your initial enrollment period. So you would apply, right? So I can't even sign you up for a supplement. I can give you phone numbers to call the health insurance company, and then they can give you an exact quote and actually enroll you. So with supplements, it is less recommended to switch around um, just because their premiums are based on your age and your health status. So it, it, you know, even if you can get back on your supplement, there's a chance that your premium might have gone up a little bit more than how it would have gone up, you know, they still kind of go up a little bit, but it might have gone up even more since you're a new enrollee. And getting ready for the annual open enrollment, your plan, whatever you have, whether it's a prescription plan or an Advantage plan, is going to send you a packet of what's going to change in that plan. So if you take Xarelto, your plan might say, hey, we're not going to cover Xarelto anymore. Just so you know, in 2023, we're not going to cover it anymore. Um, and so that would be your cue to then look for a different either Advantage plan or prescription drug plan. 
Social Security and Medicare will also send you information. During open enrollment, you get a lot of mail. I recommend just keep knowing what your plans are, whether it's a prescription plan or an advantage plan, and keeping the mail from those companies. And they're still going to send you ads too, but just kind of look through that a little bit more thoughtfully, um, just because it's like sometimes it feels like you're just throwing away all of this like commercialized mail, but if you don't realize that it's actually a notice of change or something like that, and then your plan changes and you didn't change it because you were like, oh, everything's going to stay the same, that could be a problem. So just look through stuff that's from the companies that you have, even if it's probably all ads. Um, and check your plan. Again, I really recommend just taking a quick look. It takes like 10, 15 minutes. Um, I'll show y'all medicare.gov after, afterwards if y'all want. Um, or right now, because I put a link in here. Wow, I'm so thoughtful. This is what medicare.gov looks like. This is not for anyone who has employer retiree coverage. This is going to be for people who are regular Medicare enrollees. Um, and this is medicare.gov. You can do a lot here. I really recommend creating an account. Health and drug plans is how we actually get to seeing the plans. I'm going to try to be really quick because I just want you all to see this. So you'll put your zip code. And then you can pick an Advantage plan or a drug plan. And you can say that you don't get any help and it'll just show us the prices without any kind of discounts. And we're going to add some prescription drugs. I think it's so helpful because this will just do the work for you. So I'm talking about check your doctors, check your prescriptions. The prescription is actually very easy to, uh, to add on to this. Oh, I wish I could spell metropolol. And then you can add another drug. So you can do your exact prescriptions on here. And then you can pick your pharmacy. We're just going to pick CVS because it's right here. And then it'll actually just show you the list of all of the plans in our zip code. So WellCare has several different plans. Aetna, Medicare Value. This is a PPO. So when I was talking about how important networks are, when you see PPO, that is the most flexible. So this plan has out-of-network coverage. It will pay for out-of-network services. An HMO is more restrictive, so it won't pay for out-of-network services unless it's an emergency. So as you look through these, that's something to keep in mind. Um, and you can see you know, the premium for a lot of these is free. I'm trying to find one with a cost. Yeah, so here's WellCare. It's $12.30 a month. That's on top of their Part B premium. So again, even though this is paying the bills, you still have to keep your Medicare coverage. They're, they're getting paid by Medicare to provide health care services. So they're still getting a check in the mail. And you still have a uh, costs associated with your actual getting services. So even in this free plan, your primary care visit would be free. Out of network would cost 40% of the visit. Um, specialist would be $50. Well, right, but they're, they're getting paid by Medicare. <laughs> Go ahead, Claudia. Just because you're enrolled. Just because you're enrolled. So that's part of why um, they can be made very affordable. All right. I'm going to take us back. So that's that's a peek at Medicare.gov. Yes. Did they go there to look for dental coverage? You said it wasn't covered, but at JMD, did I go to their – and then so did my prescription find my Part B, and then do I go there to find my – so Advantage plans offer some dental benefits, but it's not like a dental insurance plan. I don't want an Advantage plan. Okay, so yeah, so if, if you don't want an Advantage plan, you would not go there to look for dental. You would just Google dental insurance. So it's out in the open 
Well, yes, okay. just out. Yeah, because because there's not. I mean, the Advantage plans offer some kind of reimbursement, but there's no like Medicare contracted dental insurance or dental coverage. So you would just have to get a standalone dental plan. All right. I promise I'm almost done. Sorry, I went way over time. Um, so if you once we're, you know, as if you sign up for one of these one on one appointments, the main thing to bring is your red, white and blue card that has your Medicare beneficiary ID number, your list of doctors and your list of medications. Um, again, our places where you can sign up public library, I'll be doing in person appointments here at the library. Um, we also have appointments available at healthcare consumers where I work. And then OSF is a ship site, Chris Healthy Aging is a ship site. Um, and so they'll be available to schedule appointments. And Family Services Resource Center is also and Champaign Regional Planning Commission are also ship sites and you can um, write down their phone numbers. This is also going to be made available online. And this is actually like a, a much longer version of this is actually on the healthcare consumers website as well. And I'm going to bring up Laura to talk about how to make your Medicare work. <laughs> Hi, I'm Laura Gallagher. Why can I work at Chris Healthy Aging Center? I just want to know, so who's feeling overwhelmed? That's a lot, right? It's a lot. Poor Adani, because that's a tough presentation to do, because it's kind of boring, right? It's hard. It's a lot of information. Um, I want to make sure you guys know, if I was summarizing this, what you should get as a takeaway from this, it would be that there are people in our community that are trained and do this for a living and will give it to, the services to you for free. So. That's what I would take away from it if I were you. You don't need to know all of this. What you need to know is she gave you some good tips about questions to ask. And what this last slide was, was where do I go to people that know what they're doing? So SHIP, when we say these are the local SHIP sites, that's people that are trained and certified by the state as a senior health insurance program counselor. So that's someone, so that's all these places, we all have staff and, and I'm one of them and so is Adani, uh, who have been trained to know more uh, about Medicare and be able to help you navigate the system and know what's how to help you make those decisions. So any question you're having about this, you don't need to worry about that. And those services are free. They are not income based. So any anybody at, at, with anything, you know, any question about this, that's what I'm saying. If you were like, hey, guess what I did today to your friends, you're going out to lunch later, you know, when they say, oh, what do I need to know? I think we, all you want to know is that, like, is this slide. Like, it's really complicated. We basically spent 45 minutes showing you how complicated. So what you should know is this is, a, this is a real job, right? This is a professional thing. It's a lot to know. You don't need to know it all yourself. That's what we do. So call us and get an appointment. So Adani is saying that if you like the library, they're going to be having appointments here at the library. They do appointments at their office. We do appointments at our office. So does OSF. So there's lots of ways that you can access uh, services and get your questions answered. So please um, don't let this feel like overwhelming, like why did I come? This was exhausting. Um, we're here to help, that's what we do. Um, but we also do other things too. So I guess I just wanna make sure everybody knows, and, I, and Adani hinted at it a little bit, there are pl all of these things where we said there were costs associated with Medicare. Um, there are programs in place to help if you're lower income. So we want to make sure the Medicare savings programs, for example, is one of them. Has anybody ever heard of that QMB? People will say something like that. So basically, who pays for Medicare? Where does the Medicare com come from? That Medicare comes from the federal government, right? Medicaid comes from the state. Basically, if you didn't pay your Medicare premium, who would get stuck paying for it? Potentially the state. They don't want that. So they're like, we'll help you if you're lower income. We will help you pay that federal premium because we, we want you to be sure that you do have Medicare coverage. So for our lower income clients, there are these savings programs where they will help pay the cost of your uh, Part B premiums. There's also programs that assist with Part D premiums. So if you know someone or if you yourself are lower income and you're saying, gosh, I really don't think I'm going to be able to afford the $170 premium for Part B, there are programs that can help with that. Unfortunately, they're only for people that are very low income so there is still it is a struggle sometimes for more middle income people to get help but i guess i just want you to know so this is a, a time when it can be confusing that you're doing medicare and medicaid kind of together so you can apply for these programs through the department of human services there's a website 
But again, Adani's happy to help with that. We are happy to help with that. Again, we're just telling you these are what, if you came to us and said, I can't afford that premium, this is the mental math we would be doing. Ooh, do I think this person would qualify for a Medicare savings program? And if so, why don't we just fill out an application today? We would probably help you with that. Um, extra help is also, uh, it's a different version of it. That is a program administered by Social Security where they help with the cost of um, Part D programs. Um, again, it, all of these things, if you're not sure, that's why you should be asking a professional about it. That's why you should be talking to a SHIP certified site because in addition to knowing the basics of the general Medicare and supplements and Medigap policies, we would, all, we would also be um, thinking about these things, the ways that could help you cover the costs. Uh, so again, it's important, I think, to know that. Anything you would want to add there, Latani? Um, so I guess I just want to make sure you know that there are other programs that exist. They are very underutilized. So we really would love it if, if you know anyone, you know, someone at your church. I mean, that's the kind of stories I hear. I, you know, I know this person and they seem, you know, at our offices, um, I will say we do a lot of other things too. And so it's not unusual for this to come up in a different way. Someone would call and say, I need help paying my rent. At Chris, we are the single point of entry for all services that people need help with in Champaign and Vermilion counties. And so we might get a call from someone saying they have this financial difficulty this month. Hopefully, our staff are very good at their job and would say, you know, why? What happened this month? What's different? I will tell you it is not unusual for the thing that's different to be they got put on a new medication that they can't afford. And so rather than just pay their rent, I mean, we want to help with that, but we also, if we can, but we also want to say, okay, maybe now we need to be looking at what, what's your prescription drug coverage look like? You know, are you eligible for one of these other programs that could help with the cost of prescription drugs? So that's something that we're always wanting to do. So whereas Adani, healthcare, you have to kind of know healthcare help is what you need to reach out to her. For us, I think sometimes we're sort of, it's a ricochet. They come to us for something. I don't have enough food in the house or, uh, you know, whatever it is they need. And we might backdoor our way into having a healthcare discussion because the costs have become something that they can't afford. And they didn't even know to ask if there was a program that helped with the costs. Um, but in addition to these programs, there are also other programs. So the hospitals do have, if they've taken any federal money, um, with, which they all have, <laughs> um, you, they do have to offer some sort of a program for uh, forgiveness and for lower income clients. Um, so there is a program you can apply for. Um, again, none of us have anything to do with that. That happens on site at the facility. But uh, just know that those kind of programs do exist. Um, and, uh, you know, again, I think that's, if, they, if you called us about that, we would probably sh shift that to Adani because that's more of uh, something we don't do a lot of at Chris. But what we, I did want to do was take a minute to say what we do at Chris because I would hate to miss an opportunity um, to let you all know a little bit about what we do. Who here has heard of Chris? Okay, one or two. Well, everybody at the back. You guys are cheating. Of course you should have heard of it, the providers. Um, if you have it, we are the um, state of Illinois. Oh, gosh, we ended up on a, huh. I don't know how that happened. Um, we are, get funding from the State Department of Aging to provide, uh, to be the point of entry for any question related to, to older adult services. Uh, and we provide other um, programs. So one of the things uh, that we do is, help grandparents that are raising grandchildren or people that are caregiving a loved one at home. Um, so we wanted to let you know about those services because there's often a cost associated with those things too that could make it difficult for you uh, to afford prescription drugs. So um, these are some of the examples of services we do. One of the things that I do want to make sure everybody leaves here knowing is we will help you with your taxes for free. So if, I don't know why this is doing this, it's, but I'll just keep going back. Um, that's something we've only been doing for the last few years, so I, I don't know if word has spread yet. If you want to get on our list um, for any services, just call. Whether it is as part of open enrollment, you want a SHIP counselor to talk to you, you can call our offices get and ask to be put on the wait list for that, because as Adani said, we don't know anything yet. We can't, you know, we can't actually provide those services until October, but we can get you on a wait list for a callback. Same thing with taxes. That, you know, that obviously doesn't start until the new year. But get on our list because it is a good deal, free tax help. Um, and that, again, everybody is certified through the IRS to provide that assistance. So no need to pay somebody to do that. If, 
but only if it's a um, basic. Uh, so no, you can't like own your own business or anything complex. We just do the basic ones. Um, we have programs for grandparents raising grandchildren. Um, we have uh, programs for caregivers uh, that are, so that's a loved one. Anybody, if you're taking care of anyone, and by that, I don't mean you have to be like bathing them or feeding them. I mean, if you have a friend and you pick up her prescriptions for her, or you bring over a meal, you help with grocery shopping or paying the bills, all of those things we would consider to be a caregiver assistant, and we can help you. We, we provide services and sometimes financial assistance to people that are providing those services. Um, we also provide um, access to other benefits. So if you're not sure, um, maybe you would, we would qualify for uh, SNAP or food stamp uh, you know, assistance. We can help with that. Other programs like that. The, one of the big ones um, that we get a lot of questions about is about the license plate. So I'll talk about that. Um, we have services for people that have a memory loss. Um, we also provide a lot of classes. I'm actually teaching a class I, yesterday at the library every Tuesday about aging. Uh, and it's called Aging Mastery, um, which you know just gives some, it's kind of a fun discussion group where we talk about different topics related to aging. All our classes are free. If you're interested in that, let us know. Uh, and we are gonna be hopefully starting some more fitness classes. We also, so for the senior information services is our basic service. And I would say the biggest stuff that we get questions for that I didn't already mention, one would be the license plate discount. So who's had to uh, apply uh, to get their sticker for their car, for the license plate. It costs about $125, right? When you're older, if you're lower income, it's $25. That's a big difference to people, it's saving that $100. You do have to apply and get approved. We do that for you. If you think someone needs to know about that, have them call us. Um, we help people apply and get on the wait list for subsidized housing. Um, any kind of applying for help in, in the home, like through, um, if you have a health condition, or your loved one does, and you think you, you need someone to come in and help with um, cleaning, shopping, any of that kind of stuff. Again, if you're lower income and the need is severe, uh, we can help you with applying for those programs. We also have a newer program that for people that are socially isolated, you can imagine the pandemic has been very hard for folks. Uh, and we do have some programming where we will we use smart technology, so we give you a device like that. Uh, so it's only for people that have internet, unfortunately, uh, right now. And we let people um, be able to access their friends and loved ones. We teach you how to use the device. It's yours to keep. Uh, and we are soon, we're going to be bringing fitness technology to that. So we do, we're doing a lot of interesting things at Chris. If you're not familiar with us, I would say give a call, ask about the services, see if there's anything uh, that you want. If you ever have a question, we're a great first step to ask. You know, I, that's our staff's job is to research things and to find out who the right community resource is around here. That's what we're supposed to do. So give us a chance to do that. Uh, I guess I would also just say, remembering about the caregiving stuff, that's one that I feel like people don't know. So anybody that you know um, that is helping people, please have them call us because that's a very lonely thing. And what we want to do at Chris is to keep people from ending up in a nursing home that doesn't want to be there or need to be there. And a lot of times, it's the caregiver gets overwhelmed. That the daughter or the spouse is saying, I just can't do this anymore on my own, and we wanna help them. So let us know. Uh, so this is our contact information for Adani and I. Uh, I know that was just a quick, as I'm running out of time here, uh, summary of the kind of things we do here at Chris, but I know we wanted to have at least a few minutes for questions. Certainly, we have three minutes left. We're happy to stay after. If anyone has other questions, please know. We're happy to do that. If you aren't, don't want to discuss your personal situation out loud in front of everyone, that's perfectly fine. We'll stay after to talk to you. Um, but does anybody have any questions for either of us now? I'm just going to repeat the question because I know that they're recording. So this, this was a question about uh, that if you're a university retiree, that a lot of these decisions, you know, are compl complicated if you're making different choices like getting married or divorcing. How is that going to impact eligibility? And who should you contact about that? 
My instinct would have been to say a Donny, but I don't know. Do you feel that way? So fortunately, Adani, do you want to come up here? I think, I mean, I think it's, I think that what Adani would know is the questions to ask yeah. well, and we what the policies you'd together. want to check on. Yeah. yeah. We could call together and look through the policy book. That's another thing that I do is I try to pull that up. I don't have it internalized. Like some of this stuff I have internalized because I've done it over and over, but that serves booklet has different timelines and they have different, like, what you're supposed to do and what changes you're supposed to report. So their standards are totally different. So we can, we can try to find that policy book together and we can try to call together. And I have done comparisons between SIRS plans um, where we do the side by side and like, okay, so what's your situation? How do we assess this plan for you? Um, but in terms, because it's like, what you're asking is like, what are their policies? And I don't know their policies, but we can look at the plans together. But it is not, it, it's completely normal to be feeling overwhelmed by yes. that. The interaction of all that stuff is, is a lot. <laughs> a flowchart would be nice, yes. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else have any questions for us? I, I did do questions during the thing. I guess that's so true. I don't, I don't. I don't feel too bad. I was like, oh wait, how did we get? Yeah. Oh, we did answer questions during our thing. Yeah. Well, again, I also again, I'm just gonna say it again. You don't have to just call and ask the questions. That's our that's our jobs to figure that out. And I feel like uh, if you hear of anyone else, we would really love it if you could be ambassadors for this information in the community. It's very misunderstood, I think, program. And there are, it is overly complicated. Like you're saying, all of this is, is seems like they're trying to make it hard. Um, well, we don't get to know that, right? These are huge systems, but um, we do know who to call and all the services are free. So there's definitely no harm at any income level to just call and ask a question. I think the word coming out of that first is certain to come off, and actually it's coming in a friend of mine said, um, well, when do you have any um, collaborators? Where's the plan coming from? And I said, here. Oh, that's why you Yay. came. Oh, that's great. Excellent. Okay. Said, that's great. Yes, we, and Chris, actually, I guess, can I give a little update? Oh, yeah, of course. Chris, we are going to be um, moving our offices. We are um, going to be part of Carl, um, but nothing about us will change. Our logo is the same. All of our, we're going to be a separate nonprofit entity. And we will be moving um, from our, we have a tiny little office where we can't do a lot. We couldn't do an event like this, for example, at our offices because it's too small. We are moving into a site where we will have access to more space and we will be offering more classes and hopefully more fun stuff. I really want us to get, you know, into offering um, classes as well as, you know, bingo and fitness classes and all that kind of stuff. So I'm hoping we'll be able to do that stuff soon. So we're going to be looking that for that to be in the new year. The Aging Mastery class is Tuesdays at 1.30. And um, yep, we're, we're in, I think, week four. It's a 10-week thing. Um, and we offer it. It's, so it's really just a discussion group. It's just a fun class. We talk about, we pick a topic. Um, we have a, there's a book and we, we have topics. We talk about it and then we have a guest speaker come in from the community who's an expert on the topic. So um, we've had, we meet, well, we've, we've met, we, we're either across the hall or upstairs, depends, but it's on the library's um, website or on their, what's that, you know, their, your calendar. television calendars here as you come into the library. We would like it if you did, but if you don't, we'll just get your information when you show up. Okay. Everybody's welcome. Yes. Yes. There's more information on the website, and you can send questions mm -hmm. through that website. So we do have other classes and things that we offer, like stress busters for caregivers of people with dementia. Um, we're going to be starting Fit and Strong, which is a health-based uh, exercise class. Um, so we do have different things available. And if there was interest, we often have trouble getting interest. So that's why if you could let people know that you know we're available um, and what they need from us 
that's, that's the best way for us to provide the best services to the community is to hear from the community what they need. Excellent. Okay. Thank you all so Thanks, much everyone. for coming. Thank you. Feel free to grab cards in the back yes. for all of us. <laughs>